I want to talk to you today about a potentially life-threatening complication that you may encounter in your dental operatory, and this is called a subcutaneous air emphysema. How exactly does this happen? It happens when air is driven with force into the submucosal spaces, and this can cause swelling and pain. Now, the good news is in most situations, these are self-limiting. So in seven to 10 days, they tend to disappear as the air is spread out, but they need analgesics because the patient may be in pain, and they also need antibiotics because you have bacteria from the outside entering into the body spaces. This can cause severe complications like necrotizing fasciitis, which you don't want. So broad spectrum antibiotics are indicated. What are the typical culprits for this type of air emphysema to develop? Most often reported in the literature is the use of an air rotor handpiece to perform dental extractions. So when you're doing a dental extraction, the flap is raised and you're using the air rotor to either section the tooth or to gutter the bone, but this drives a lot of air into the spaces and this causes this kind of emphysema. Other culprits, such as in an endodontic procedure, uh, when the use of hydrogen peroxide, especially if the fill is beyond the apex, that can generate oxygen and cause emphysema. Even something as simple as your three-way syringe, which has air, if that is uh, forced down an extraction socket, that can cause emphysema. Nowadays, you hear a lot about lasers, and lasers, some of them are air-cooled, and that air cooling can cause the emphysema as well. Other new technology which could be causing a problem are air polishers. These are intraoral sandblasters. Typically, they're used when you're trying to debride an implant which is undergoing peri-implantitis, so you debride and clean the implant with the air polisher. But this introduces air as well, and this can also cause an air emphysema. Other surgical procedures which can cause these types of emphysemas are sinus elevations and the placement of zygomatic implants. So you need to be aware that there are a lot of procedures in dentistry which can cause this kind of problem. Now, as I said earlier, thankfully, most of these are self-limiting and you just need antibiotics and analgesics. But depending on the location, they could be more severe. For example, if it's something around mandibular second or third molar, you could have uh, the air going into sublingual or submandibular spaces, and that could compromise breathing. That can cause a pneumothorax. It's even been documented to cause blindness. It's caused respiratory failure. There are a lot of severe complications. Fortunately, they are very, very rare. So you need to be aware when not to use these instruments. What can you do to enhance your patient's safety? I would suggest the use of an electrically driven handpiece or the handpiece from your physio dispenser to prevent air from going into an active surgical site. You could use a rubber dam. Uh, it is suggested to use smaller retraction cords or even Teflon for retraction and make sure they're not using excessive pressure and tearing the periodontal ligament. Also, post-op, very important, you need to tell your patients that they should not be doing, into doing anything that introduces a lot of air with pressure into their mouth, such as, you know, blowing balloons or uh, very vigorous coughing or even smoking. These kinds of things will cause an issue. Using straws is also a problem. So these are certain things that we need to tell our patients after an extraction, which we may easily forget. I hope I've confused you enough Till the next time we meet, this is the Dental Review Guy signing off with a smile.